Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to talk about 12 different task types that you can get in Microsoft Project. Starting at the top, you have the two main ones, the auto scheduled and the manual scheduling task. So what's the difference between these? So if I recreate this down the bottom there, I'll just name that one. The default on my computer is for every new task to be auto scheduled. And you can see what happens there. It puts in the dates and you get the indicator on the Gantt chart. Now, if I change that to manual, which is the default when you buy project, nothing's happened to it at the moment because I've already created it. But if I just put this next one to manual, this blank one, and then call that manual, you can see the difference with this. Nothing appears in terms of dates and icons on the Gantt chart, it's blank. So that's the difference. Now to change the automatic settings, you've, you've got to go into options. So that is file, options down the bottom, and then you are going to schedule, and you are changing this, new task created to auto scheduled for all new projects. That's what I've already done. So that's what you'd want to do if you need to change yours. Otherwise you are doing this manually. If I put that to auto scheduled, it fills it in. You've got the options at the top there. And then down the bottom left, you've got a button. So if I click on that, it will let you do this as well. So that's the first two. I'll just delete those two out of the way. Next one is a split task. So I'll just do task A and I'll make it a five day task. So you can split tasks multiple times if you wish. And the tool to do that is a split task tool at the top here. You click that, you get a little guide there. You just miss that out and go down to the task. And when you sit your mouse on the task bar, you'll get a date appearing. So that date there says Monday the 21st. If I click and hold, and pull forward and I'll get two dates. It's giving you this sort of date range. So now that says Tuesday the 29th and Friday the 2nd. Now I'm going to let go. And then it gives a split. And if you make a mistake, you can just pull these two back together. If I want to split that again, or I just want to split one day. If I click and let go, it just, do, just does a one day split like that. So that is a split task. Let's get rid of that one. The next three are all, or next four are all from the um, same place. In fact, there's five of them all together there, look. So the first one says fixed unit. So I'll go fixed unit. This is a default task type. And this you have to find in the task information box. So I'm going to double click on that. Task information and then advanced. And there you can see fixed unit. And you can see also the effort driven tick is not on. So this really only, only applies when you're adding resources to tasks. You will see a difference if you've got the tick on there. Um, I'll show you how that works in a second. But these are the main ones that you've got there. You've got fixed duration, fixed unit and fixed work. And if I click on fixed duration, you've got the effort driven tick available on fixed work. You don't have the option to take it on or off, but it is on. So that will affect um, your tasks if you're not aware of that. But let's just go back to the first one and I'll leave the tick off for a second. Now, when you apply resources to this task, this is what will happen. So if I go resource, assign resources, I've got three resources in there. If I assign Ben to that, nothing happens to the duration of that task. Nothing's happened. If I remove all these people, and go back into it. And let me just put that to a one day duration so it's got a fixed day. And put the effort driven tick on. Now, now what will happen is, when I allocate my first person, nothing will happen to the duration because that's my first allocation of resources, but any subsequent allocation will start driving that duration down. So just watch this. So if I add, if I add two people, these two people nothing will happen to the duration because that's my first allocation but if i then decide to add a further resource it will then start driving the duration down as you can see there so if i remove all three of these 
and just put that back to one day. If I add all three together, let's put that back to one day. So if I add all three together, nothing will happen to that duration because that's my initial allocation. If I remove all three and just add one person, assign, and then add the other two, it will now drive it down. And that's what that effort driven tick means, what it does. Now the next one down is fixed duration. A fixed duration task could be something where you've got um, concrete that needs to have a fixed drying time, so if, wherever, five days before you can put any building material on it. So if I go into there, double click, change this to fixed duration. Again, you've got the effort driven option, but I'm going to leave it off and assign Ben my first allocation. So I've assigned Ben, nothing's happened to the duration. Don't worry about the over allocation there. I'll assign Bill, nothing's happened to the duration as it should not. And nothing's happened to these above getting full pay as is Bob. So this could be like a training event. It's a one day fixed duration. No matter how many people turn up, it's still one day and everybody's getting paid. What happens when you put the effort driven tick on, if I take that off, if I go back into this, double click, tick the effort driven, because it's a fixed duration, obviously the duration can't reduce. So what does reduce? If I click OK to that, I'll assign Ben. Nothing happens initially because that's my first assignment. The duration stays at one day. However, uh, the cost is at 80 pounds still. If I assign Bill, watch what happens. So the duration stayed the same because it's fixed, but the effort has halved. So now they're only doing four hours a day, 40 pound each. So that's what's reducing the actual man hours on the task. Let's take these off there. Now the last one of this group is the fixed work. So to get the fixed work, I need to insert the work column. So I'm just going to right click at the top there, insert work, type W, work. Now the next one is fixed work. And if I double click on that to set that one up, fixed work, the tick is on and I've got no, no control of that at all. So basically what's going to happen is if I add additional resources to this, it will try and drive down the, the um, duration. So you need to watch out for that. Click OK to that. So let's say we want to pay for 10 hours work. So that's the fixed element over a 10 day period. That's how that works. And let's say you get one person doing it. So that's just 13% of Ben's time over that time period. Because the tick is on, if you then decided to add another person, it is going to drive the duration down, as you can see there. But if that is a, a, a contract that you've got that you want one hour over a 10 day period, you'll have to manually to put that back. It's almost as if you've had a, a second thought and you should have had two people on it to start with. If you don't like the way this looks, you can you can change this round, um, but it's just the way projects worked it out. You could put 13% for that as well if you want. Okay, so let's just remove those two. Now, we're down to here, delayed tasks. Now, to a delay, a delay task is this, let's call it delayed. I'll get rid of this work column now, I don't need it. I'm just gonna highlight and delete that off. So let's say it's a, a one, let's go for hours. Let's say it's an eight hour, eight hour task, which is still one day, because that's a default setting. But you want it to be delayed. So now what I have to do here is I need to split the screen and on the second part of the screen, I'm going to put um, resource usage on. Come back down. Screen gets a bit cluttered when you're doing this, but if I click on that, so I need to assign, I'll assign Ben to this. So it comes up in resource usage. So this delayed task, I need to add assignment delay. 
So I should just be able to, in fact, I can see it there, assignment delay. So this is what we're going to do. I want this to be a two hour delay, two hours. Click away from that, and then that will give it a two hour delay. So you can see it on the Gantt chart there. It's knocked it over into the next week. Or next, yeah, next week, because it's a Friday. So that's the assignment delay. Let's get rid of details. And let's get rid of these four tasks. Just delete those off. And let's scroll back up to the top to see where we're at. So that was delayed. Now work contour task. Let's have a look at this one. So if I go task A and say it's a 10 day task and I'll assign Ben to it. So if I now go into, just move this out of the way. If I now go into task usage, you can see Ben on that task, eight hours, eight hours all the way across. Now, if I double click on Ben, you've got a work contour, which is default of flat, but you've got several options in there that you can select. Now, these are all preloaded um, scales, if you like. This is where you don't really know how long a particular task would be. So you've got like a backloaded task. You just want to get some figures so you can um, get a budget together for your project. So if it's two years in, in, in the future, or uh, you might have a, a late a late peak. So the project manager might not do anything until near the end sort of thing. And anyway, I'll just I'll just show how it works. So I'll select backloaded and then click OK. And it, so it now starts off with minimal work and then increases like so. But what it's done and what I don't like is this 10 day task has now become 16 and a, more than 16 and a half days. So if I just undo that, what I tend to do is um, double click on task A, make it a fixed duration. So it's fixed at 10 days and then apply the, the work contour and it will do it within the 10 day fixed duration. The hours will now reduce quite a lot, but you've still got it within a 10 day period. Now you can also, if I go back in there, put it back to flat. Okay. You can also manually do this. If you know, for example, you've got track record, you could go one hour. It's going to do one hour there. One hour. It's probably not going to work at all in those three days. Then it's going to ramp up a little bit uh, that like that. So that is a, basically you've customized that. You've edited it. It's only going to be 38 hours. It's a more accurate way of planning your project, to be fair. And on the actual Gantt chart, if we go back to the Gantt chart, that's given like a split task because there's no, no hours work there. So Ben would be able to work on another task there. So if you want to be really accurate in terms of man hours, that's the way to do it in task usage. But that's that one. Let's get rid of that. Now, a summary task is things like this. So if I do um, task A and you want a summary task, tasks, summary, it just does that for you. So you could put project A above that if I type on it. Project A, like that. Now the last one is a linked task. So this is quite cool. And this is how it works. So if I open a new project, get myself a new project and call it um, Project A and just have two tasks, task A, task B and indent those two tasks underneath that and then go for a duration and then just link these two just put a number two in there so we've got a 57 day total duration on project a so what you can do is you can highlight the whole summary tasks so as long as this is on the auto schedule feature because if this is on manual or if you type on that this is why i don't like this feature if you type on that this is no longer clocking up what is um, underneath it's just something you've manually typed in 
if you make sure that is on the auto schedule option and then that is collating the durations underneath and if this changes you'll see the change as well so you highlight that you select copy control C you go back into the other file and you select the row and you go to the paste button and you select paste special paste link that's the key paste link okay and it should come in 57 days now if I go back to the other project file and change the duration of one of these so the total changes at the top there 78 when I come back to my first file my source file that's automatically changed so this is a great way if you need to pull off summary information from a huge project or lots of different projects and you want it in one central place that is how you can do that and that is linking tasks and it's the last one of these 12. Now there will be many other types of tasks that you can do uh, obviously it's what you're classing as a type of task but that is all I want to do for now and hopefully you've enjoyed those and understand I'll see you on the next one thank you for your time